even my least favorite kit on my kit review works up to a darling cute stocking. Check it out. A while back, I did a review of three different kit manufacturers and reviewed many different um, qualities that the kits contained. And the one that got the lowest score was the kit that I am going to show you today that I made up. And even though it got the lowest score, it works up to being just a darling Santa holding a cat or a kitten. and just a really sweet stocking. So follow along and I'll give you some tips if you choose to do this stocking on how to make it a little easier. There's the kit. Um, it is uh, unpacked and this is the directions here. Now just a heads up right here it says contains printed felt and paper patterns. Now I, being the optimist, uh, hoped that that meant that I had uh, paper in addition to the printed felt, meaning that if I wanted to make this again, I could use the paper patterns and remake this kit. However, that was not the case. There were only two pieces of felt that were actually stamped with um, markings, and that was the white felt and the green felt. So the white felt is the back of the stocking and all of the white pieces, and the green felt is the front of the stocking. And as you can see here, the Santa with Kitten, there is only a half page of directions. So the directions for this kit are very general, and um, I felt that uh, I spent a lot of time kind of pondering what did they mean by that. Um, so I'm going to try to help you to solve that problem by letting you know what I found um, as the solution for what they were suggesting. So like all the kits, you're going to start by cutting out the front of the stocking. Um, however, because most of your pieces of felt are not stamped, I didn't start cutting anything until I dealt with the paper pattern pieces. And I dealt with the paper pattern pieces by cutting out each piece in the paper um, exactly to the lines and then laying it on the color of felt that was indicated. I used a extra fine or ultra fine black Sharpie and I traced around each of those pieces. Now, uh, those pieces um, also have indication markers on them, like what pieces go on top and where. I did not transfer those markings. Um, I did transfer some of the sequin spot dot markings, and I did that um, and found that my marker was going right through my felt and onto my cutting mat. So I put down these placemats to uh, keep that from happening. But again, cutting right around the outside of the piece. Now it does say to use a seamstress marking wheel and tracing paper um, or carbon paper. I do not have that. I have lots of seamstress equipment, but I do not have that. So I tried to use the best that I could, which was to just cut and trace. And I just let the markings go. Again, I did say that I marked some of the sequin dots. After um, a couple of pieces, I quit doing that and I realized that I can eyeball the pieces uh, or the sequins and get them um, right next to one another without needing to have a dot to place the sequin on. So, um, so I quit doing that and that did make the making of it or the sewing of it much easier. So you can see here I've got a few pieces traced already and this is my ultra fine uh, Sharpie and it um, 
It does bleed a little bit. You can see that the lines are not as clear and as perfect, but since you're gonna cut just on the inside of your line, um, I was able to cut away all of the lines that I marked and uh, have them not show up anywhere, even though they did bleed through uh, or bleed out a little bit. They kind of are thicker than a line that would have been on a printed felt, um, but this did work. Now. It worked all until I came to the black felt. And of course you can't use a black Sharpie on black felt. Um, I used to have a silver Sharpie, I could not locate it, but I do have a white laundry marker. So I used my white laundry marker to mark on the black felt. Now, unfortunately, because it's felt and not a woven fabric, the ink from the laundry marker um, did kind of go all the way through and didn't leave much of a image, much of a line. Um, so I did have to hold it up to the light and uh, so that I could see those lines and be able to work with it. Um, because of these extra steps, cutting out the pattern and then tracing the pattern onto the felt, um, this pattern that only has 60 pieces did take me as long as a kit that I would have made that had maybe 150 pieces. Um, so just a heads up, if you love this pattern, um, it is gonna take you a little bit of extra time. So yep, so you can see how it marks through. Okay, here is the black felt with the laundry marking on it. You can see that it's almost invisible, but if I hold it up at an angle, and here is the white laundry marker made by Pentel. I will link this marker as well as the Sharpie um, in the description so that you can get them if you need them. And I tried many different things. Now you can see here when you hold it up, so when you get it to the light and you hold it up, you can cut, um, cut these pieces out. They are there, even though they're difficult, they kind of disappear sometimes, but uh, they're there. And then uh, my hint for this, um, when I traced around the Santa face, um, I realized, look at all of these different things that they tell you to put and wear. So I saved this piece of paper. Most of them, after I cut them out, I just threw the paper piece away. This one I saved and pinned to the piece. And as I began to apply those pieces, I was able to use it as a reference. I could even poke a hole with my pen or my pencil at the corners of say the eyeballs or the um, eyebrows and make a dent, a little dimple in the felt that I could then use very quickly and pin my piece on. Um, the dimple doesn't last long, but it's long enough if you're ready to get your piece right on there and then you don't have to um, make all those markings and try to figure that out. So here are all the pieces that I have traced and marked. You can see they, they turned out just fine, but again, it's a step that you normally don't have to do, so it does take a little bit of extra time. Um, they gave you plenty of felt and the felt generally speaking, was a good quality felt. Um, it was nice and even and um, smooth. So um, it was, it did make marking on it a little bit easier because it was smooth. So that's my hints for marking and cutting. Here is Santa's face with most of his pieces applied. You can see that I have referenced that paper piece. I have poked it with my uh, pencil and made some dimples through it so that I could get these pieces in the right place. Now, up to now, I haven't stuffed anything on the face, but I will, once I get it partially sewn down, his beard and uh, up to the head, then I will go ahead and I will stuff the beard and the face. Now, it's um, not clear to me many places in this pattern when to stuff and when not to stuff. And so I decided to just use my own good judgment based on previous kits that I've made. So um, up to this point, I don't think I've stuffed anything, but I will begin and I will stuff. As you can see, his beard is stuffed, his face is stuffed, his um, mustache and his nose are stuffed.
And uh, then all the additional pieces that I added after that, I did add stuffing to, whether it indicated or not. And now when I get the front done like this, oh, let me tell you the great instruction on this pattern. This pattern indicates that you do all of the applique work first, no sequence. And then when you've got all the applique finished, then you go back and you add all the sequins. Well, I thought this was fantastic because those sequins really like to grab your thread as you're trying to applique additional pieces on. So this worked great. I started with the sequins at the top and I worked my way down to the bottom. Of course, you could start at the bottom and go up if you'd like either way, but it really, it really did work nicely. Um, and I appreciated that direction very much. Um, I thought that was a great direction. So as you can see here, I have finished the front and I have cut out the back. And once you cut out the back, that's the time to lay that back piece on your lining fabric like I've done there and pin it down. Then you're going to use it as a pattern piece and cut around it. I do cut just slightly to the outside of it, number one, because I don't want to cut that lining or that um, backing piece at all. And because it's good to have a little bit of, of extra in the lining so that you've got plenty of room to make the entire stocking usable. So there it's ready to be cut out. Right here you can see that I have not stuffed his arm on the, it's on the right side right now, right there where my hand is. Um, everything else is pretty much stuffed, but that arm piece was put on very, very early. And as I got finishing it, I noticed that it looked funny because it wasn't stuffed and everything else was. So uh, what to do? I will let you know. Flip the stocking over to the back side and in the center of that area, clip a very small hole, um, which is what I did. And then insert your stuffing into that small hole. Once you get the stuffing in the way you like and arranging is a little bit more challenging to get that stuffing in there and to lay it out evenly across the area that you're stuffing. Uh, but it certainly is uh, very doable. And then when you get done, you are simply just going to whip stitch that cut closed. Now, no worries, no stress, because you're going to line the stocking so those stitches can never be grabbed or pulled as you're putting things in and out of the stocking. The lining will completely cover it and obscure any of this work that you've done from the back side. So um, it's a simple way to repair or to uh, augment what you've done or to correct something that you may have missed early on. Here the stuffing has been completed and I did stitch up that little hole that I made in the back to get the stuffing into and I'm so glad that I did take the time to do that and to fix it while I could. Now the stocking is completely finished, the backing has been applied and the lining is inside. It looks so puffy and so cute. Um, it has just enough details. It has plenty of sequins. And you can see you change color when you're stitching the back based on the color of the front area that you're stitching. So green and red. And there is completely and fully lined. You can see that the entire stocking is usable and available for goodies. I do not stitch the front lining down until I personalize it. And I don't personalize it until it gets sold. So um, I leave that open so that I can work with it when it does get sold and add the proper name. So here is just a final look at this Darling Santa stocking. And I hope that you take an opportunity to check out our other videos to, if you want to make this stocking or another stocking similar, check out our links in the description to take you to where you can purchase them, the kits and make them and check out our other videos. We've got kits, other stocking kits, um, other different Christmas ornaments, all things Christmas. So we hope that you have a blessed and wonderful day. 
and that your holiday season is wonderful and spent with time with precious time with family. <music>